with all the various content formats, writing, video, podcasting, and you might say images, Instagram, how do I prioritize those? How do we, how do those work together? Uh, it's a great, it's a great question. And um, so the first thing I always want to say is, which I, I believe um, is you should choose the format that you're most energized by, or that comes most naturally to you. Um, that's very important because for example, if you heard me say, oh, you must write, or you must do video, or you must make a podcast, and you are feeling very challenged by that format, you're just going to be, you know, swimming uphill, where, you know, swimming upstream. Whereas if you were really, if it really comes naturally for you to write or to speak on camera or to speak on, you should do that. That's like the first priority for you, okay? Um, because you'll be consistent in doing it. And by consistently doing it, guess what? You'll have a body of work in that format, which you can then repurpose for the other formats you see. So you always start with the one you're naturally energized by or that naturally comes to you. So for example, for me, I had a really hard time with writing for most of my life, um, various reasons. One is I was an immigrant and learning English. And so I had a kind of a traumatic childhood and learning the language and being bullied by, by so, so like, like writing was always hard for me for most of my life. So when I started creating content consistently in 2015, I said video. I have a writer's I have a writer's block, but I don't have talking talkers block. So I basically started making videos, and then after I make, made videos for a while, I'm like, okay, I know some people don't want to watch me talk. So out of courtesy for them, I said, well, let me just quickly, quickly, quickly write up the bullet points of what I said in the video. So for those who don't want to watch me, they could just read the bullet points. And so that's how I got up my writer's block. Was I'm like, this is not an essay. This is not an article. I tricked myself to say, this is just bullet points, you know, because otherwise I would get too scared looking at a blank screen, writing an article, I couldn't do it. But I could write bullet points on my phone. You know, that's how I tricked myself. I could write bullet points on my phone. Uh, basically, this is what, I, if you want to read, if you want to watch, this is basically what I said. So I started doing that consistently. And then suddenly I, after a hundred times of doing that, I, I overcame my writer's block gradually. So, um, but some of you, it's the opposite. You don't like to be on camera. Uh, you're shy about that right now. So you need to start with writing because that comes naturally to you and you can, you can do that without, without too much effort. Uh, for others, you know, you might not like to write, but you don't want to be on camera either, but you don't mind talking like on the phone. So that's where you could simply record, you know, open your mobile app, uh, your, your voice memo app on your phone and just talk like you're talking to a, to a client or an ideal client, especially after a client session, when you've done some work and you have still have some ideas or excitement from the client session, that's a great time to create content, whether it's writing or video or recording a, a note to the client, but it's gonna be published as a podcast too, uh, or do it through Zoom, just turn off the camera on Zoom and just record yourself you know, talking like on the phone. So um, anyway, that, that's, that's in terms of how to prioritize, I think go with the natural energy first. But in terms of uh, if, if all of it was okay to you and how would I prioritize in terms of the marketing power of it, here's what I, what I would say. Writing has the, has the most um, uh, audience building power because with writing, uh, you can run ads to cool audiences on Facebook and on Instagram. When on Instagram, the writing is basically either an image with caption or you do like, like what I do on Instagram, a carousel post where I take the article and split it up into 10 slides. Anyway, writing is my favorite way of building a cold, uh, people who don't know you yet, you're just building a cold audience uh, using ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and LinkedIn ads. That's my favorite way of building, building audiences through writing because um, the, the, the difference between writing and video is that when you run video ads on Facebook and Instagram, if they watch even three seconds of your video and they don't like you, they don't like your energy, too bad. They've watched three seconds and now they're considered part of your warm audience for Instagram and Facebook ads purposes, which is terrible. I think that's a bug. They think that's a feature um, because they think, oh, three seconds. Uh, no, I think three seconds is not enough to filter in somebody, right? Anyway, so that's why I don't recommend using Facebook and Instagram video ads to build a new audience. I mean, I think that's, 
It's possible if that's all you want to do, that's possible. We could talk about that separately. But I say writing is the way to build a new audience. Okay, have new people find you because they they have to be interested enough in what you wrote to click continue reading. And that's when they click continue reading or see more, that's the point they're roped into your warm audience. Anyway, that's a little technical, but writing is also, if you don't want to run ads, writing is also good because people have more patience to at least quickly read something than to watch you talk for even three minutes, okay? So that's why writing is better. Uh, even if you don't run ads, if you're just saying, well, I hope my writing gets shared, people are more likely to share writing than to share videos, okay? Um, or podcast episodes. Again, they have to have the patience to listen you know, to even three minutes of something, right? Versus quickly read, oh my God, this is interesting. I'm gonna keep reading, okay? Easier to get a new audience that way. Uh, also, good, easier for SEO, search engine optimization. You know, if you put your writings on your website, on medium.com and on LinkedIn uh, articles, those are all great for SEO. So writing is better for audience building. Video and podcasts, of course, is better for audience nurturing. Once you have, uh, as, as you grow your audience, you want to nurture the ones who are there, meaning build more of a relationship with them. And that's where I think video and podcasts are more powerful for doing that because of the energy signature uh, transmission than, than writing. Writing is fine, but seeing you on video with your energy and or hearing your voice in, in their ear is way more powerful for nurturing and uh, relationship build and therefore getting potential clients, ideal clients and, you know, referral sources and speaking opportunities and all that stuff. So that's how it all works together. Um, you know, you, I, if in the ideal world, if you were okay with all three, build an audience through writing. And as you, you know, a few months into it, now you want to nurture your audience as well. Now add video and, and podcasts. Third is what I would do. So I, I hope this is helpful. I want to say a little bit uh, about the repurposing part of it. So let's say you, like me, had writer's block, and but you're okay with making videos or making podcasts. When I say repurpose, basically, it means, let's say you make videos consistently, and you're like, oh, how, how do I turn that, the videos into, into writing? Well, you could do one of two ways. One way is by uploading your videos to YouTube, uh, you upload the video to YouTube, let it process. Sometimes it takes a few hours. They will automatically give you a, a transcript. It's free. YouTube automatically transcribes all videos into whatever language you speak. And, uh, and you could just download the transcript. You can Google how to download, or I have a YouTube video on how to download the YouTube transcript. And then you could edit the transcript into an article. Admittedly, that's actually a lot of work to, to edit and put grammar and all that. It might be easier after you make a video Right, or to, you watch your video, you make a video, you either make a video or you watch your own video, and then you just quickly write afterwards what you said, um, and you can add more. And that might literally be faster than trying to, you know, edit your transcription and make it make that work. So it's that's an example of of, a, of one way to repurpose something. And then the follow up question of well, if you do all. All, multiple formats, which one should you post first? Should you post the writing first or the video first? It doesn't matter. Um, not really. Um, I mean, you could say, well, if you're building an audience right now, uh, putting the writing first is probably a better idea because you can either run an ad or have it be shared and then the video can come later because you want to get the message out faster. People are more likely to read writing than to, than to watch videos. Um, you know, so, so maybe, but it, it really doesn't matter which one you put first. Um, now, if you have literally an article and a video and it's the same exact thing, it probably makes more sense to split it up at least, you know, different days so that it's not like this literal same, like I just, I didn't, I just, I'm like watching this video. Didn't I just read that article? Like it was, seems to duplicative if it's on the same platform. So maybe separate it, separate it into at least several days or, or a week or several weeks. That's probably a good idea. So, yeah. but even if you don't, it's okay to put it at the same time. If you just want to streamline things, you're just trying not to worry about that. That's okay too. Yeah, really is okay.